Manchester News Online, I'm Aaron Summers. Our top stories today. Ed Miliband hoping for change in the South. Labour wants to see a new way forward for Southampton. Winchester's council reassures residents after petrol panic. We'll stay calm and carry on, and we'll all be fine. Titanic Stories, museum commemorating the sinking, set to open. We're telling personal stories. And in sports, the Bison finished the season in style. Good afternoon. With local elections looming in Southampton, Labour leader Ed Miliband visited the area to take questions from local people and attempt to gather support for the Labour vote. George Berridge went to speak to him. Times have been tough for Labour in the last few weeks amid controversy over the future of leader Ed Miliband, who was in Southampton today to rally support from local voters and stress the importance of the city to his party. It's important because these are hotly contested council elections. Labour wants to see a new way forward for Southampton, including attracting jobs to this area, taking action on housing, and also do, undoing some of the damage that the current council is doing. Well, I think it is definitely a sign that change is needed. What you've seen is incompetence from this government over petrol, over issues around emails, and what you've seen is unfairness as well. A budget that was unfair, that, that as I say, cut taxes for millionaires while raising taxes on millions of people, including Britain's pensioners. I think that's not fair. With local elections coming up fast, Ed Miliband has a long battle ahead of him to gather support for his party and secure his future as its leader. George Berridge, Winchester News Online, Southampton. I'm now joined by George Berridge here in the studio. A very good afternoon to you, Hello. George. Now, why was Ed Miliband in Southampton today? Well, Southampton is one of Labour's main targets in the whole country, with Conservatives currently holding the council by 26 seats compared to Labour's 19. Uh, so Ed Miliband is very keen to get vo voters to swing away from the Tory council, who have been in power for four years. And what happened when you spoke to him? Well, Ed was very reluctant to talk about the key issue that his critics have been throwing out, and, and that is the future of the Labour, le Labour leadership. Uh, though he was very short to discuss uh, local issues and the importance of Southampton to Labour, including social and economic issues facing the area. Yeah, and the big question here in the South on everyone's lips at the moment is what's going to happen next for Labour in Southampton? Well, a third of council seats are up for election in Southampton, largely being Conservative. So Ed Miliband is sure to have a long, hard battle on his hands to get voters to the poll booths and to put a mark in the Labour box. Well, thank you very much, George. That was uh, George Berridge there. For the uh, full interview and for more on the elections, visit our website winnall.co.uk. Another issue that Ed Miliband spoke to Winnall about was the petrol crisis. Our next report comes from Graham Marshall. The scene at four courts across the country was a little different this time last week, but the effects of panic buying are still being felt by independent petrol stations. Michael Garner, a spokesperson for the retail motor industry, said we're stuck to be honest. At some forecourts, they lost more than a day and a half of business. The feeling in the RMI is that if fuel tanker strikes were to happen, then obviously they'd respect that right, but it would affect their business. But at the moment, there just isn't enough product to support the system. But the council believe they're doing all they can to prevent an emergency. Well, I hope the city council won't have to do anything. We have uh, uh, to be consider both the interests of residents and particularly the uh, interests of the local businesses. Um, but our responsibilities only uh, come into uh, to play when um, the situation uh, gets to uh, emergency level. The uh, number of uh, fuel stations around here with, uh, with fuel uh, has increased. Um, so uh, if everyone can stay calm and carry on, then we'll all be fine. Whilst the council are looking for calm, it's the public that will be the most affected in the event of a fuel strike. Graham Marshall, Winchester News Online. Over 1,500 votes were cast during last week's student union elections, making it a turnout of more than a quarter of the university's population. Among the winners saw new student union president Harry Stowe. Daniel Mackerel went to meet him. In safe hands. That's the view of current SU president Seb Mill. Stepping down at the end of this semester, his replacement Harry Stowe is preparing to take over the role after winning last week's university elections. Over the moon, really, to get the role. It's given me ideas for what needs to be maybe developed or improved next year. So, yeah, he's done a great job, so I want to continue the work that he's, that he's done. With the turnout of 26% of the student body, this was the most hotly contested election in its history. This was helped by the large amount of posters 
and the Q&A that took place during the week of voting. It was great that it was, it was quite a full event. Um, scary for the candidates, but a great event, I thought. Walking into the office where he'll be making many key decisions over the next year, Harry looks to get advice from his predecessor. But his desk won't be too far from where he currently sits as community actions officer. And although there will be a predominantly new team taking over the student union, Seb Mill remains confident that the hard work will continue. They all do an amazing job next year, so um, yeah, it's sad to leave, but I know that there's an amazing team here that will obviously carry on the good work that the whole team done this year. With high tuition fees being introduced this September, the pressure will mount on the student union, with big challenges ahead for its new president. Daniel McCrell, Winchester News Online. And now with here with all the sport, it's Lewis O'Brien. Hello, Lewis. Hello, Aaron. Basin State Town's recent winning run meant that Jason Bristow's side were closing in on the playoff positions. The Dragons were up against a relegation threat in Haven and Waterlooville on Saturday, looking for another three points. Eddie Jones was at the Camrose Stadium. So good is Basin State's current form under Jason Bristow's management that even Stokey, the mascot, fancied a game. It wasn't long until Basingstoke found the opener, though. Jide Okambote's acrobatic effort looping over Lyle Beasley in the haven't goal and into the bottom corner. Town did make it 2-0 midway through the half, a whipped free kick inadvertently headed into his own net by Joe Dolan. Then, for a moment of controversy, a long-range effort appeared to cannon off the town keeper and over the line, but no goal was given. We will let you make your own mind up by watching the slow-motion replay, but it was clear what the haven't players made of the decision. In the second half, haven't started much brighter, spurning a number of chances to cut the deficit. But it was Basingstoke who again made the breakthrough, Nathan Smart's tame effort somehow getting through the haven't goalkeeper. He probably won't want to watch this many times again. With haven't seemingly running short of ideas, it was down to their best player on the day to give them some hope. Christian Nanetti scoring a superb low free kick from close to 30 yards. The glimmer of hope became a real possibility when, with minutes to go, Ogunbote put into his own net. Town hung on for another three vital points in their pursuit of a playoff place. Eddie Jones, Winchester News Online. Sorry for the technical problems in the last package. Eastley's chances of promotion are all but over, so their weekend game against Eastbourne was, was more about pride than anything else. The home side got off to a great start with ex-Eastbourne captain Gary Elphick heading home to open the scoring. After the break, Elphick's defensive partner Tom Jordan doubled the scoring in almost identical circumstances heading home from a corner. Eastbourne did manage to pull one back, with substitute Ellis Remy acrobatically firing home, but it wasn't enough, the game finishing 2-1 to Eastley. The Basingstoke Bison played their last home game on the of the season on Saturday and were up against the league champions Guildford Flames. The Bison were looking to find some form going into the playoffs. Henry Lewin Titt was at the Planetize Arena. The Basingstoke Bison played the league champions the Guildford Flames in their last home league game. Flames had the better of the early chances and took the lead when Joe Colhut tapped in at the far post. Curtis Hoop beat Wall one on one to double the visitors' lead. In the second period, the game was more even. Craig tried, missed from close range, but Daniel Vorab was on hand to tip in a Joe Miller pass. A minute later, Steve Morrow's shot went across the goal and Liam Chong gave the final push, levelling the scores at 2-2. The Flames restored their lead. David Savage's shot hit the Bison's netminder and rebounded in. Joe Miller had a one-on-one -on -one chance on goal, but the Flames goalie stopped the shot. Frustration was starting to show for the Bison, but with just four minutes to go, Joe Miller's pass was deflected and found its way into the goal, sending the game into overtime. With just 14 seconds left in extra time, the Bison were awarded a penalty and Steve Morris stepped up to take it. The Bison only have one more league game before the playoffs and we're hoping for a less dramatic win. Henry Lewin-Tip, Winchester News Online. That's all from Sport. Back to you, Aaron. Thank you very much, Lewis. And finally, a museum commemorating the 100 year of the anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic is set to open in Southampton. Lee Jarvis reports. From being the captain at the helm of the ship to shoveling coal in the depths of the boiler room, 
The Sea City Museum will allow you to experience life on the Titanic when it opens its doors on Tuesday the 10th of April for the very first time. The museum will commemorate the 100th anniversary of the sinking of the ship, including exhibitions highlighting the residents from Southampton who lost their lives. Obviously we're telling personal stories, individual stories, so, so people who, who might have, be related to somebody who was on board will be able to come and hopefully find out more about their relative. Other exhibits include the history of Southampton over the last 100 years and the impact of the maritime heritage of the city. The focus of the Sea City Museum is the legend of the Titanic. Lee Jarvis, Winchester News Online, Southampton. That's it for this week, but for more award-winning news and sport, log on to our website at winall.co.uk. But from all of us here, goodbye. <laughs>